So you've been streaming for a while now. You got things sort of figured out. You got a sick logo, some amazing overlays, but you still feel like there's something missing. Hi, I'm Mackinac. I'm your graphics guide. And on today's video, we're talking about transitions. All right, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is load into pixlr.com. This is a free editor software that you can get online. Um, and it's kind of similar to Photoshop. It's downgraded a little bit, so you don't have all the extra bells and whistles. So simple, we're gonna create a transition backdrop. A background. I right, change that to 1080p, get transparent. All right, from here, we're gonna basically take ourselves a copy of the image that we're gonna use for the center, the logo, if you wanna call it that, right? So I'm gonna open the image. We're gonna go into, where are my graphics? So they are, okay. So there's the graphic, okay? And we're gonna steal the colors. So that's what we're basically gonna try and do here. I take the dark blue. We're gonna take this little black that's a little off and then we're gonna take the white to make sure that that's correct. And that what? yes, what is that? All right, we're good. All right, so we're set there with the three colors. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the bucket. I'm gonna do blue first. We're gonna add blue, I'm gonna add a new layer. Here's the next one. We're gonna add in the black-ish, the grayish black, if you wanna call it that. Add that in there, and we're gonna add another layer in, and we're gonna go ahead and go with white. And then we have three layers. We're gonna go back to the blue layer. Okay, I'm turn off the other two layers. Go back to the blue layer, and I'm gonna hit free distort on the edit tab there. Bring it in slightly. Same thing with the bottom corner. Bring that in slightly as well. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. As uh, all of this stuff is, most of that stuff's not gonna be seen anyway. All right, so for the black, we're gonna do the same exact thing, bringing in just a little bit more. Just a hair more, right? There we go. And then, same thing with this side. Hair. And right there. All right. The whites. Oh no, look it, there it is. Same, same, free distort. I'm gonna bring that in. I'm gonna bring that in just a little bit more than it was. Kind of give that little free look there. This side, bring that in more. All right, and then I don't like to leave it just plain colors. We're gonna, we're gonna mess with this just slightly, okay? How we're gonna do that is we're gonna do uh, layer styles. And we're gonna do, for the white section, we're gonna do an inner glow. We're gonna do it the darker color, but we're gonna bring it one shade down here. And then we're gonna bring the opacity down to 80, because it's just a good look. Uh, do the hardest at one, bring that up to maybe about 50. Yeah, that works. All right, so that's beautiful there. The black color, we're gonna go with the layer style. Uh, similar to that one, but we're gonna do an outside glow. That's gonna hit this outside edge, okay? Um, and that's gonna be the same color as this side, but I'm gonna make it a little darker because, or a little lighter because of the blue here. It's gonna show in just a little bit better there. Um, that's too much. Let's see what happens if I take that down to 80. Mm, I might need to bring that down to one. Let me see if I can come, no. Oh, one, one, two will work right there. But I'm gonna bring this down to maybe like 30, yeah, 37 is fine. Okay, so that looks good. And then lastly, we're gonna do this one with the inner glow, and we're just gonna make that the black color. I'm gonna leave it the black color, bring an inboard, I'm gonna do the one, we're gonna go to about 50, bring the opacity down to 80. That looks good. Everything looks good there. All right, now, this is the way this works. In order to have that transition, keep it with an angle like that on both sides, you're gonna save this as a PNG file. Make sure you save that as a transition background PNG. Oopsie, PNG, get the right one. And we're gonna say that there. After that, we're gonna open up the new program and edit it more down there. So you already have the original copy here. Uh, I just wanted to redo this one for you guys. So part two of this project, we wanna go ahead and open up what we call DaVinci Resolve 16. This is the beta version. This is also the free version. There is a paid one that you can buy, but we don't need any of those features in the paid one. We just need the basic free version. That's why I'm talking about all the free stuff today. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna head over to the media pool. We're gonna drag in the images that we're gonna wanna use. Uh, from these three, three things here, we want the backdrop, we want a sound effect, and we want the logo that we're gonna be utilizing for this transition. Go back over to the media file. We're gonna hit effects if it's not already open, which should pop up a window down here. And we're gonna 
drag in a fusion composition. Now what this is basically our, our, our source that we're gonna work with and I'll show you why in a minute. We're gonna take this, we're gonna click and drag it into about three seconds. That'll work right there. Go over to the fusion tab. And there's our media output for the fusion. I'm gonna take the image that we want as well as the logo and we're gonna add in two transfer nodes. One for each thing, plus a merge node that we can combine them into the output. So we're gonna put there, there, and that should be the backdrop, that should be the foreground, and then merge in. There we go, there's our logos, right? So the purpose for the transformation nodes that you see here are so that we can adjust the size of the image itself. So we want the size to be locked in about right there. Um, but before I start really messing with the sizing of this image, I wanna go down to transform node two where the background is, and we're gonna increase the size of that till it's all white. And then we're gonna save the size, lock that in. Now in the front end of this guy, since we're in the front, we don't wanna be in the center, right? That's the center. And I usually put that around 18, because if you cut it in the middle 36, half of or halfway of the halfway, which set at 18. So we're gonna set that there. Same thing with the 54, we're gonna set right there as well. Now I have two keyframes there and there, as well as the keyframe here. But this keyframe needs to be all the way over to where I can't see the image anymore. Right there, beautiful. Now that's a keyframe there. There's a keyframe here. There's a keyframe here. And then the last keyframe here, I'm gonna drag this image all the way over till I can't see it anymore, right there. Now we have four keyframes for the backdrop, so it should look like this. Brilliant. Okay, so now I'm going to move this guy just to where he crests the logos, and that's about right there. So what I'm going to want to do, that's at 10, I'm going to go to the transfer node 1, transform 1 node, sorry, and I'm gonna, that's going to have the logo sizing, and I'm going to bring that sizing of the logo all the way down to a 0, and okay, that's going to be a 0 in the size there. That should be the same way over here, and it is, okay? That's a zero. So now when it gets to about 18, we want that size to be the regular size it was, 0.5, okay? So that stays at 0.5. We're gonna go over to 54. We're gonna make sure that stays 0.5. And as this plays forward, we want it to shrink down to zero right there. That's a good spot for it. And that shrinks down to zero. So here's how this is gonna look, ready? Beautiful, okay? That's exactly what we wanted it to do. It pops in and pops out right before the logo changes. And that change is gonna happen right in that center, that 36 number. All right, but we're not done yet. We still got some few things to do to make this proper like. I don't like things to be very like crisp and stuff like that. We want to have some motion. So we're gonna change the splines of this transformation node. I like to have both in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and just kind of slide it over so we don't have to worry about seeing that. And I'm gonna just adjust this so I see all the nodes all in one spot. There we go. And I'm gonna just drag and highlight. And I think we hit F to smooth it all out. So now what that's gonna look like is this. It pauses and then goes. It pauses and goes. It just makes it a little bit smoother. I mean, you can't tell. Three seconds, you're not gonna be able to tell that. But if you're gonna create this the right way, always smooth out the transition, right? So we're good there. Okay, cool. Now I can get rid of the spline and then we're gonna go back over to the edit tab. And from here, I'm gonna add in the sound effect. So we're gonna add in our boom. And I think I'm gonna put it right at the beginning of the transition. I'm gonna go ahead and control A for both of these guys right here. We're gonna go ahead and create a new compound clip. That's an important step. Make sure you do that. That way ensures it syncs in properly. Uh, this sound might be a little bit too much. So what I'm gonna do is take this and normalize the audio volume down to nine, that works, so he'll that nine. And so it'll sound a little lighter. Perfect, that's all we want, okay? So now the clip's done, we're gonna export this clip and we're gonna do that. We're gonna do uh, go to the last tab here, which is the render tab. Uh, in order to render out the, uh, the, the process is right with all the alphas and everything like that, we gotta make sure we're doing it as a quick put, quick put output. And this is the easy button you can push, the H264. We're gonna name this transition. And we're gonna change that location to make sure we put it in the location where we're putting all of our stuff. That'll be YouTube graphics here. We'll set it as the MOV file for now. 
Um, in order to make this proper, like, we have to actually sit and put it as an in individual clip. Okay, and then we have to render an alpha frame. Where are you doing? Okay, we need to change this to a GoPro Cineform. Change this to RGB 16. And then export alpha. See right there? Export alpha. And we should be good. So that'll be a transition. Okay, that uh, that keeps that ensures that we're um, we're looking good there. We can add that to the render queue. And then once we're done rendering that, we start the render and it puts it right into the file folder that we want. Okay, we're not quite done yet. That is a huge file. When I look at this file, I'm looking at a transition foil of 31.2 megabits. 31.2 megabits is a large file for three seconds. Um, in order to do this proper like, we're gonna have to do one more thing. We have to go into our Google or Internet Explorer, whatever you wanna do. And we're gonna type in um, MOV to web M converter. This is where we're looking for an online converter, something very simple and easy um, to use. I know a lot of Persh people use, um, is it iConvert or whatever it is called? I like to do the, um, where is it? The video online converter here, this one here. It's pretty easy. You could just click and drag the file that you want to put in here. And I just click that guy right there, wait for it to load up. And you don't need to push any additional buttons. It's just gonna confer, uh, change the format over to a WebM format. Um, so once that's loaded, you'll start the conversion, change it to a WebM format, and then you'll have your transition. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is basically take that WebM file and transfer it over to OBS or Slops. So in OBS, under Scene Transitions here, we're going to go ahead and add in the transition. It'll be under Stinger. And change the Stinger name to whatever name you want to make it. Hit OK. Under Video File, you basically go into Browse, find the file you want. And in Slobs, it's going to ask you the length of the video. In OBS, it doesn't. It automatically knows. Uh, you set the transition point for both. It'll be 1500. And auto monitoring, you're going to want to monitor and output. That way you can hear the sounds of the transition itself. From there, all we need to do is test it out. Just like that. If you want any of these transitions, again, uh, the material for these guys is going to be down in the link, uh, description uh, below under the Dropbox link. Feel free to jump in there, grab the uh, the documents for um, the PXD file for the uh, the graphic. So you can go on pixlr.com and edit however you want. Uh, as well as the transition project in um, DaVinci Resolve 16. That way you guys can mess with that as well there. Uh, if you have any issues or if you're just lost about any of this, feel free to hit me up in the comments below. I will get to them as soon as I can. Um, if you are in dire need and you really need my help quickly, you can always find me on twitch.tv. Uh, I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 p.m. Central Time. Just Jump in the jump in the chat. Ask me a question, whatever it is, I will answer it the best I can. Usually, I'm good about answering uh, questions in my chat, so feel free to hit me up there. I'll be happy to help you out. Um, you guys have a wonderful day, and I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next video. As long as it loads, got a potato. Hang on. Uh, uh oh, hang on. Looks like we're going to start the video again.